one thing I ask, one thing I seek, is, is to, to live, live in the house, house of the Lord. Every breath, every word, every thought, every moment, every, every minute, every, every day. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. 1,440 minutes. All for God's glory. Remember the time we were walking on 1440? It was us three. We were vibing, having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, like, are we there yet? Yes, because I knew how many times. I was like five, ten minutes. We were walking on such a long walk. All of a sudden, a tissue box hit you in the face, bro. I don't know what was going on. That was so wild. Bro, that kind of scared me, though. Oh my goodness! It's out of nowhere. Out of just nowhere. Like, Why couldn't they hit it at you? Why they gotta throw it at me? I mean, man, did they think you were crying or something? Oh. Something about Pastor Catherine's message. <laughs> yeah, something about Pastor about Catherine's message about throwing off your plans of the day. It's really, just messes with my head sometimes. Unforeseen. But first, let's check out what's going on in the streets. I'm Isaac, and I'm on the hunt for knowledge. What's your name? My name is Stephanie Balderas. I'm London. Rose. My name's Kyle. Elizabeth. Levi. Catherine. Yeah. I'm going to ask you some speed round questions. You ready? What do you use to unclog a toilet? A plunger. A plunger? A plunger. Oh my goodness, you had to think about it. A plunger. What? A what? A plunger. A, a napkin. What? A napkin. No, no. What a baseball bat. OK, we're going to move on, because that's you know that's not it. How long should you boil an egg to hard boil it? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. No, 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 lower, lower. 15? No. No, it is definitely. No. I don't know. 10 minutes? Five. Close. Eight minutes. No. Seven. No. Five. Wrong direction. Four. No. <laughs> Wrong direction, Kyle. Uh, like five minutes. No. Uh, 10? Close. 15. Wrong. I don't know. 30 minutes? No. 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 Wrong, di wrong direction. Uh. Two seconds. No, that wasn't close. <laughs> I don't know. 12 minutes, all right. Okay, what does CPR stand for? I have no clue. Uh, calm. Nope. One of, the, one of the words. Pressure. Uh, claim. Nope. Is that where you like push on their chest? Yes, that's when you push on their chest. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, uh I don't know. <laughs> Wrong. A broken clock is still right how many times a day? Uh, one, two. Hey, okay. Once, twice. Correct. Two times. Zero. Because no. it's broken. Oh, one time. One time. Uh, five. No. no. Uh, 24. You're going the wrong direction. A lot. That That's not the answer we're looking for. Yes, no. Twice. Oh! That's the first time someone, okay. What do you need to jumpstart a car? Batteries. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, jump car starters? No, well, you almost said it. You, you almost said it. Jump car starters. Jump, jump starters. Jump, jump is right, everything else was wrong. The things, the thingies, the clippy on thing, the clippy on thingies. Hey, um, you, uh, uh, thing. wait. Uh, ah. a what? <laughs> you know the answer. Hey, um, it's the orange cord thing that you. It's a jumper cable. Jumper cables. That's correct. What is the shortest book in the New Testament? Is it? I I I know it. It's back we need it. In, we need it out your mouth. That that one book. Yes, it's that one book. First Peter. No. Second Peter. No. There isn't a third. <laughs> I knew that. Okay. Okay. I know this. I know you. I know you know. I know this. That's incorrect. Um. Oh, you lied. <laughs> I said. It's not Jude. I, it is. I forgot. Jude. Close. Third John. Nope. Second John. Correct. Third John, thank you. Second John, have a nice day. Second John, it was second John. Thank you for your time. Wow. 
What's up, 1440? Welcome to week three of Are We There Yet? Uh, we are about halfway through January, and that is just crazy to even think about, but it's awesome because we've been able to talk about purpose. Um, and we were talking, you know, week one, Pastor Quest and I, we talked about how God has given each of us a divine purpose and a divine destiny. We talked about the Apostle Paul, um, who was before that was Saul, and how uh, God moved on his life and moved on him to step into that God-given destiny and purpose that he had for him. Um, but it's important to remember that, uh, you know, we, we talk about, we call this series, Are We There Yet? And if you've ever been on a family road trip as a small child with all your siblings crammed in the back seat, you've probably asked your parents this question, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And I think a lot of times it's really easy, especially as we enter into a new year, you know, we've got this blank slate and we're thinking about goals and what God is gonna do in the in the year of 2021. I think it's easy for us to get into this mindset of are we there yet? Are we there yet? Have we arrived yet? Have I accomplished this vision or or this is, has this thing that I've been believing God for manifested in my life yet? And it's easy to kind of get into this waiting game rather than focusing on God's purpose for you for today, God's purpose for you for this moment. You know, we all would say we want God's purpose to take for us to take place in our lives, God's will to happen for our lives. But I think a lot of us, we think that it's all about getting to that end goal. Uh, but something, and I read this the first week, I wanna read this to you again. Pastor Terry says, when it comes to the lifestyle of faith, which is what you and I are living, oftentimes the journey is just as important as the destination and that couldn't be more true. It's important for us to realize that it's on the journey uh, as we press on towards what God has called us to that we discover who God is, that we grow, that our faith increases, that we become stronger, um, that we mature as believers. And so it's important to remember that you're on a journey and that uh, God is leading you one step at a time. We read Philippians chapter three. I wanna read this to you again because I think it's a good reminder. The apostle Paul, he writes this, he says, I do not consider that I have captured and made it my own yet. Other translations say, I have not, I do not think I have arrived yet. I haven't gotten there yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and straining towards what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. And so it's important to remember that you will have victory in your life. You will see the breakthrough. You will see the manifestation. But as the word of God says, we go from glory to glory. So after every victory is another faith project, so to speak. After every um, arrival, after every accomplishment, after every goal is met, there's a new one that God has for you as he, your, uh, his purpose for your life continues to unfold. And uh, today, you know, last week Pastor Quest talked about the prophet Jeremiah and God's purpose for Jeremiah, which we all know Jeremiah 29, 11, where the Lord says, um, I have a plan for you to prosper you, not to harm you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. And it was awesome to see God's plan and purpose for the prophet Jeremiah and for the people of God through Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was willing to trust God along the way. Today, we're talking about another person in the Bible who I really believe almost out of every person, every character in the Bible, every story, this person probably has the best story when it comes to talking about purpose, God's purpose for your life. And that is the story of Joseph. Now we're pretty familiar with Joseph. If you've ever seen the movie, you're familiar with his life, but I wanna just briefly kind of go over Joseph's journey, because Joseph, from the very beginning, God had a plan and a purpose for Joseph. From the very beginning, God had ordained Joseph to rule over the nation of Egypt, to be a person of great influence. Um, and it was important and significant because he was, a, um, he was an Israelite, so he was a Jew. He was a man who sought after Jehovah, the God of Israel, and yet he was in that position of leadership in a country that didn't even worship God. And so I think it's important to look at how Joseph really got to uh, fulfilling that purpose and that destiny that God had for him. And it starts, of course, with vision, right? We talk a lot in January every year about vision, but if you'll turn in your Bible to so Genesis chapter 37, and we're gonna start in verse three, it says, now Israel loved, this is Jacob, he loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a distinctive long tunic with sleeves, his coat of many colors as it's known. 
and it says that when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of them, they hated him and could not say peace in a friendly greeting to him or speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen now and hear, I pray you, this dream that I have dreamed. We brothers were binding sheaves in the field and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and your sheaf stood around my sheaf and bowed down. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or are you going to have us as your subjects and dominate us? And they hated him all the more for his dreams and for what he said. In the very beginning of verse, the next verse, verse 9, it says, But yet Joseph dreamed another dream. And I want to stop here because we see that that dream, and we know Joseph's gift, Joseph's, um, his gifting of in God was dreams. It was, he was a dreamer. He knew how to interpret dreams. He had that discernment on the inside of him to do that. And we see that from the very beginning, God lays out his purpose. God says, hey, you are going to reign over your brothers. You are going to reign. You're going to be a person of influence. You're going to be a person of power, right? God spells that out. And at this time, Joseph was only 17 years old. Many of you watching today are 17 years old. And God lays out this purpose. Now, what God didn't tell Joseph was how he was going to get there. And if you know the story of Joseph, you know that it was a roller coaster of a ride for Joseph to arrive at the place where he was ruling and reigning. It took him a long time. He actually didn't even get to that place until he was 30. So it was uh, a really long, a 13 year journey for Joseph to get uh, ultimately see that dream actually come to pass. But along the way, Joseph learned to trust God. And I think it's important that we don't always get to our destination the way we think we will. It's important to remember that. We don't always uh, think, we, we think it's gonna be a straight line and a lot of times the Lord is able to orchestrate detail and even the things that the enemy intended to harm you, the Lord's able to turn that around like Romans chapter eight says and use it for his glory and use it for his purpose. I wanna emphasize something you know, Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, and I think we talked about this maybe back in December. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And in the Passion Translation, it says, truth's shining light guides me in my choices and my decisions. That goes back to what Pastor Quest last week was talking about. It's about you and the choices and the decisions that you make to step out, right? And it says, the revelation of your word makes my pathway clear. And back in December, we talked about this verse a little bit, and I wanna remind you of this. It says that his word is a lamp into your feet. It doesn't say that his word, if you imagine you're on a dark path, you know, you're walking down a trail in the dark, in the woods, woods and you've got this lantern out in front of you. It doesn't say that that lantern illuminates your entire path and shows you every tree and every rock and every obstacle and every snake and everything that you're going to have, have to do, every incline and every decline that you're going to have to go over to get to your end destination. But what it does say is that his word is a lamp unto your feet. So that lantern has enough light to show you your next step. Right, And if you're consistent in taking that next step and trusting that way the light is illuminating, which we know is the truth of God's word, is showing you what, what you need to see in the moment. And you take step after step after step and you're obedient and you're, you're submissive to what God is saying, what, where God is directing you. What's going on everybody? Hey, listen, I'm back. And I just wanted to uh, take a second to invite you to invite Jesus into your heart and into your life. Maybe you've watched this um, today and you're like, man, I'm not really a church person. I'm not really a super Christian or anything like that, but I like what you're saying and it's resonating with me. Listen, if that's you today, I wanna to encourage you to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. It's really easy. It doesn't require a bunch of paperwork. All you gotta do is say a couple words and I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna lead you to do that today. So repeat this prayer after me, all right? Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. I believe in you. Make me new again. I wanna live every minute, every day, all for your glory in Jesus' name. That's it. See how simple that was? Listen, congratulations. If you just made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you. I know that the angels are rejoicing in heaven, are excited. Uh, listen, this, this, is, this is a big thing. And, and I want you to always remember that you have people that you can lean on and ask questions. It's a big decision. So here's what I want you to do. 
If you've prayed that prayer with us today, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at 1440 at emic.org or just leave a message in the comments. We will see it. All right, love you. Be blessed. Congratulations. You will make it to your destination and ultimately that little lantern will light your entire way. But oftentimes it's one step at a time. Now we see that in the life of Joseph. God gave him this overarching vision. He showed him what the end goal was, what the destination was, but he didn't show Joseph necessarily the 10 step plan to get there. And so this begins to unfold. If you'll skip ahead in Genesis, Genesis 37, we see that that hatred for his brother grows. And while I'm talking about his brother's hatred, I love that it says that Joseph dreamed yet another dream, even though it says his brothers hated him all the more. His brothers hated him all the more. And yet Joseph continued to dream. Joseph continued to pursue the purpose that God had for him. And I want to encourage you, 2020 was a crazy year. Um, and we're not necessarily, uh, we don't know what, what 2021 has in store, but I will say that there will always be people in your life who will try to derail you from the purpose and the plan that God has for you. They will hate you all the more because you walk in the blessing. They will hate you all the more because you walk in obedience. They will hate you all the more because you don't uh, have the same standards that they have. And yet we see that Joseph continued to dream. So he didn't let the hatred of his brother keep him from pursuing his purpose, pursuing the destiny that God had for him. So if you skip down uh, in Genesis chapter 37 to verse 23, it says, when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped him of his long garment, which he was wearing, which was that coat of many colors. And they took him and cast him into the well-like pit. Okay, so a big hole in the ground, which was empty. There was no water in it. And then they sat down to eat their lunch. So Joseph comes out to check on his brothers. They throw him in this pit. They had plotted to kill him. Uh, if you run, a, if you want to kind of read in between um, the lines here, they had plotted to kill him. They sat down to eat their lunch. And when they looked up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites, which were Arabians, coming from Gilead with their camels. And Judah said to his brothers, what do we gain if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him. Okay, this is crazy. If anyone ever tells you the Bible is boring, they are, they are not reading their Bible. They decide that they're gonna sell their brother so they don't have to kill him. And it says in verse 28, then as the Midianite and Ishmaelite merchants were passing by, the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the well and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who j took Joseph captive into Egypt. So they sell their brother into slavery. Now, when God gave Joseph that vision that he was gonna be ruling and reigning, that his brothers were gonna be bowing down, I don't think Joseph thought, oh yeah, my brothers are gonna sell me into slavery. I'm gonna end up in Egypt in a, in a few weeks. I don't think that's what Joseph was thinking. I don't think that was necessarily in the cards or part of Joseph's 10 step plan. And I think a lot of times we try to orchestrate and plan out our lives and plan out, if you're a planner like me, uh, you try to plan out how you're gonna get to that destination. And I don't think Joseph saw that coming. And I can see Joseph sitting in that well being like, Lord, am I here yet? Are we there yet? You know, what is going on? What is this? I thought you had this big plan and this purpose. And a lot of times, you know, the enemy will try to come against you and he will try to destroy you. But God, you have to be, begin and, and remember to trust that God is able to work even the things that were intended to destroy you. He's able to work those for your good. Um, and so we know that Joseph ends up in Potiphar's house. And so if you'll turn over to chapter 39, and I know I'm reading a lot, but I think it's good to actually read the story, to put our eyes on it, to remind ourselves of the details of what happened in Joseph's life. 39 verse one, it says, Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain and chief executioner of the royal guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. But the Lord was with Joseph, that's key. We'll see this over and over again. The Lord was with Joseph. And even though he was a slave, um, he was a successful and prosperous man and was the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did flourish and succeed in his hand. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight and he served him and his master made him supervisor over his house and put all that he had in Joseph's charge. So we see Joseph is prospering even, even in the place that he never first saw. And I think a lot of times as we walk out 
our purpose and we walk out this journey of faith as we're talking about, I want to encourage you, even when you feel like you're in a season where you don't see that destination being something that's feasible, you don't see how it's even going to be possible for you to get where you thought that God told you you were going to be. I want to encourage you that God will prosper you right where you are, that even right where you are, even though, you know, you might feel like you're called to preach or you're called to be an evangelist or you're called to be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher, whatever you feel like that calling is for your life, a mom, a father, a husband or a wife, you have all the all of these visions from God, even though you might not see that being being tangible, you're like, that will never happen. That feels like that's so far away. I have no idea how God is going to let make this happen in my life. I want to encourage you right where you are. Look at right where you are, whether you're in school, whether you're doing sports, whether you're homeschooled, you know, whether where your friend group's at, look at where you're planted and ask the Lord what he has for you here, what his purpose for you is here in this place in your life, because God is able to make you prosper even in the places where you weren't supposed to prosper, right? Because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And we see that in Joseph's life. And we know that jo that Potiphar's wife ends up telling this lie about Joseph um, and that, that Joseph attempted to harm her. And so Joseph is thrown into prison. Potiphar is angered, right? And um, in, verse, in verse 19, it says, Joseph's master heard the words of his wife saying to him, this is the way your servant treated me. His wrath and his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the state prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But again, here we see the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and loving kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the warden of the prison. And the warden of the prison commanded, uh, committed to Joseph's care all of the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatsoever was done there, Joseph was in charge of it. The prison warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge for the Lord was with him and made whatever Joseph did prosper. I love this because what did we say at the very beginning? What was God's original purpose, overall purpose for Joseph? It was for Joseph to be in charge. It was for Joseph to reign and to rule, to be a man of influence. And we see that everywhere Joseph goes, even though all of these steps were unplanned, even though Joseph had no idea that he was going to be sold into slavery and then he was going to be a servant in Potiphar's house and now he's in jail. Every time it says when he went into Potiphar's house, he was put in charge over all of Potiphar's things. And when he was put in jail, he was put in charge by the jailer of everything uh, concerning the jail. So we see that Joseph continued to operate in his purpose and in his calling. He, he continued to use his God-given gifts and abilities even when he hadn't reached the ultimate destination. And I want to encourage you, you know, as we talk about pursuing your purpose as a teenager, maybe you're 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, I want to encourage you right where you are. The, the word of God says that his gifts are without repentance. So you're able to operate in the gifts and the plans and the purposes that God has for you even now. Even though you haven't necessarily reached that big end destination yet, right now where you are as you continue to take steps of faith and trust in and rely on God and rely on His plan for your life and trust His purposes, even now as a 13-year-old, you can continue to put a demand on the Holy Spirit and operate in those giftings and those callings that God has placed on the inside of you, just like Joseph did. And I can see Joseph sitting here in the prison saying, God, are we there yet? Are we here yet? What is going on? I thought we had this, this thing planned out. This was, again, another unforeseen circumstance. But, you know, we know that Joseph remained in the prison for another two years and he continued to operate in faith and in patience, which Brother Copeland says those are like the power twins. Faith and patience working together will always produce a great manifestation, a great harvest in your life. And two years later, we know that the Pharaoh begins to have these disturbing dreams. We know that the ring, the cupbearer says, oh yeah, I met a guy when I was down in the jail who knows how to interpret dreams. Why did he know Joseph could do that? Because Joseph was still operating in what God had called him to do, even in the prison. And so he remembered Joseph. Joseph is brought out before the Pharaoh and Joseph interprets his dreams. And then this is when I, we, I, we really begin to see Joseph's purpose, that end destination, so to speak, unfold. If you skip over a couple of chapters to Genesis chapter 41, 
In verse 38, it says, Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find this man's equal, a man in whom is the spirit of God? And Joseph and Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as your God has shown you all of this, there is no one as intelligent and discreet and understanding and wise as you. You shall have charge over my house and all my people shall be governed according to your word with reverence, submission and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you are. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in the official vestments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. In verse 43, he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had and the officials cried before him, bow the knee and he set him over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And so we see later in chapter 42, this reconciliation take place. And finally that dream Joseph had so long ago coming to pass as his brothers bow down to Joseph as Joseph is in this place of ruling and reigning in the land of Egypt. Now, why do we look at the story of Joseph? I think it's because we could probably relate to this story in our own lives. A lot of the things that have happened to us in the last year, we didn't see coming. We didn't know this time last year that COVID-19 was gonna come on the scene, that 2020 was gonna look the way that 2020 looked. But as we enter into this new year of 2021, and we are talking about God's purpose and his plan for our lives, it's important to remember that even though we don't have all of the steps lined out, even though we don't know all of the details yet, we have a plan and a divine purpose from God. Like Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know God knows the plans and the thoughts that he has for us, thoughts and plans for our welfare and our peace, not for evil to give us hope in our final outcome. And so we can know that as we walk through our life, as we put our faith and our hope in God, as we continue to ask him, Lord, what is your purpose for this day? What is your pur purpose for this moment, for this endeavor, for this thing going on in my life? As we begin to take those small steps of faith, we will walk into the overall promise that God has for us. And like the apostle Paul says, it's not that we'll ever arrive, but we'll continue to go from glory to glory to glory. We'll continue to go from one uh, victory in our faith to another. And we will be able to say, as the apostle Paul said, uh, near the end of his life in 2 Timothy, I have fought the good fight, the worthy, honorable and noble fight. I have finished the race and I have kept and firmly held the faith. So I wanna encourage you, you wanna be able to, to say, I've kept the faith, I fought the fight, I finished the race, continue to step out, continue, continue to be obedient, knowing God is with you, just like Joseph did and trusting in every step of the way that God has a divine plan and divine purpose for your life. Amen? Amen. Well, uh, I've enjoyed being able to go over this with you. Uh, it's a powerful thing to remember that God has that kind of a plan, that kind of a destiny and a purpose for your life. And so be encouraged today and go knowing that and asking the Lord, what is your his purpose for you right now? And as you walk in that, we are believing to see great, mighty miracles and manifestations in your life. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks. Isn't that good, some good grass? Yeah, thanks, Joseph, for being my shepherd. Man. Now, Joseph, you know you're my favorite son. I got this tunic of all the many colors around the world, and I just want you to have it, because you are the best. Oh, th thanks, Pop. Man. <laughs> yeah. I see this on me? You know how you get this? All these colors up on here? And being the best child, you know what I'm saying? Good old Pops gave it to me. That goes for all of y'all brothers. You better know who's the favorite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dad doesn't love me. This is ridiculous. All I do is work and hard on these sheeps and everything. And all, you, I should have got it. And why didn't you get it? This is ridiculous. Tell you what, guys, there was one time I was sleeping, sleeping. And I tell you what, if you guys think that this tunic is cool, just wait till you hear about this dream, ready? I was sleeping and I would just magically was this wheat. And 
bunch of wheats were just bowing down to me, and I was like the king wheat. And I tell you what, I think that that was y'all, because I was just in space, right? And kid you not, 11 stars. I think those stars were y'all, and y'all were all bowing down to me. The earth and the sun was bowing down to me, and I tell you what, the thing was spending this tunic, because I was the head honcho all around. So y'all better do that right now. Bow down. Bow down, like my dream. Do it. Give me that many colors of tunic. We don't like that. We don't like you. We're tired of your business. We're tired of your dreams. You're no king. We're going to sell you to slavery, and we're never going to see you again because we're your brothers, and we're better than you. Man, I chains on me. I'm a slave. Oh, there's, oh goodness. Where's my tunic and my brothers? I miss my family. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. God's still with me, though. <laughs> Joseph, come here. I need to talk to you. Look. My wife told me some things, and I don't appreciate it. Ugh. You're getting out of here. You're going to the dungeon. I have had but, enough of you. But, but, well, that's OK, because God is still with me. Yo, what's up, Baker? Uh, How did you get in here? What, you the dude that serves the cups? How did both of y'all get in here? What's up, Joe? Hey. What's up? Oh, what's up, Mikey? Hey. How you doing? How you doing? I, I don't know, man. The wife was tripping. That's how I got in here. Yeah, man, I tell you what. I had a dream, and I was drinking the stuff, and I didn't die. Um, and it was like mm -hmm. th three or something. Yeah. Can you, can you let me know what that means, yeah. Joseph? I know exactly what that means. Y you're going to get out in three days. You're going to be out. You're going to be serving the cups. Yep, that's what it means. Joseph. I have to tell you this dream. I was cooking the pizza, oh. and I put the pineapple on the pizza, oh. and the crows came in. You put that pineapple on there? And they, they, eat, the, they eat the pizza. This is bad. Oh, this is bad. The three crows, what does this mean, Joseph? Well, you're going to die. I, it's nice knowing you, but God's still with me, but, man, you're going to die. <laughs> Whoa. My goodness. There were some fat cows and skinny cows, and the skinny cows ate the fat cows. There were seven, seven of them. Yeah, seven of them, right? Yeah, yeah, seven of them. Oh, that's right. And then there was, there was some big, tall, green crops, grain crops, tall crops, the biggest you've ever seen. And then the, the little crops were eating the big, there were seven of them. They were eating the crops. And then the cows were getting eaten, and the crops were getting eaten. What does this mean? What's up, Pharaoh? How, how you doing? Oh, you had that dream? Man, I can interpret that because God is with me. So you had, what, those, the, the skinny cows and the fat cows, oh, then the big crops, then the, yes, there's seven of them. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what that means. So we're going to have seven more years of, like, good stuff. Like, we're going to be eating good. We're going to be eating all this stuff. So I suggest we, like, save it because the next seven years, I was going to be famine. Ain't nothing. Sun, dry up, nothing. Ain't going to be nothing. Man, ain't birds flying. Nope. They all gone. No, nothing. Uh, no one, why didn't anybody tell me that sooner? You are my right-hand man. You are promoted. Let's go. Man, I love Pastor Catherine. Every time she preaches, it's just a new revelation I get from God. So amazing. Whew, so good. It just hits different. It hits it different. It splits right through yes. my body and soul and just straight to my spirit. Ooh, Jesus. Hey, you get some of that sometimes? Hallelujah. So remember, like, comment, share with your cousins, with your grandma, with yeah. your little cousin with Timmy. Your Pookie All and them. them. Just them. make sure you get the word out there because it's ready yes. and available for you to watch, for you to like, comment, share. Eat it up on all social media. That's and right. remember, create it on purpose. For a purpose. Go live on purpose.